the lives lost in the Texas floods and the desperate search for the missing. The Texas floods weren't just tragic, they were a mystery. In minutes, rivers exploded without warning. Children vanished from summer camps, homes were crushed, over 70 lives were lost, and no one could explain why it all happened so fast. But now, scientists have finally solved it. After days of studying radar data, storm patterns, and terrain maps, experts have uncovered the truth behind the flood's terrifying power. It wasn't just heavy rain, it was a perfect storm of rare weather events that no one saw coming. And what they discovered reveals just how vulnerable Texas still is to disasters like this. A normal holiday turned into a scientific puzzle. On July 4th weekend, the Texas Hill Country was supposed to be alive with celebration. Camps were full, rivers were calm, and families were gathered for what should have been a peaceful summer break. Camp Mystic near the town of Hunt was one of many places filled with laughter and excitement. But within hours, everything changed. A deadly wall of water tore through the Guadalupe River, catching hundreds off guard and leaving a trail of destruction that stunned the state. The water came sweeping through without much notice early on the 4th of July. The devastation tore through a summer camp, killing 27 girls and their counselors. The tragedy struck fast. Rain began falling during the night, and by early morning, the river had surged more than 20 feet in less than an hour. Cabins were ripped from their foundations. RVs flipped and floated downstream. Children and counselors were swept away while they slept. At least 78 people died. Over 850 were rescued. Many are still missing. It wasn't just a flood. It was a full-blown disaster that left people wondering how it happened so suddenly. For days, news outlets and officials scrambled to piece together what went wrong. Was there a missed warning? Could it have been prevented? People needed answers. And now, scientists are finally giving them. After days of collecting radar data, analyzing flood paths, and interviewing meteorologists, the full picture has become clear. This wasn't just a random storm. It was a chain reaction of rare weather conditions that combined at the worst possible time. Two decaying tropical systems had dumped enormous amounts of moisture over Texas. At the same time, a rare weather system called an MCV, a mini low-pressure vortex, parked itself over central Texas. When that warm, tropical moisture hit the stalled system, it created slow-moving storms that dumped heavy rain directly over the river's headwaters. The land, already dry and rocky, couldn't absorb any of it. Scientists now say this was a perfect storm, an extreme weather collision that no one could have fully predicted, but one they finally understand. The hidden storms that built the disaster, nobody saw coming. While most people were focused on weekend plans, something strange was already building in the skies above Texas. It didn't look like a major storm system at first. There were no hurricanes making landfall, no named storms heading toward the U.S. But up in the atmosphere, two fading tropical systems were quietly combining their moisture and drifting northward. One was the leftover remnants of Tropical Storm Barry, which had made landfall in northern Mexico. The other was what remained of Hurricane Flossie from the eastern Pacific. Both of these systems were dying, but they weren't done causing trouble. All that leftover tropical moisture moved upward into central Texas. It was heavy, wet, and invisible from the ground. But scientists watching satellite data saw it forming a dangerous combination, especially when it began to meet with something called a mesoscale convective vortex, or MCV. This strange weather feature is like a mini hurricane on land. It creates a spin in the atmosphere and acts like a magnet for moisture. The moment these three forces collided, Barry's moisture, Flossie's leftovers, and the MCV, it was game over. The MCV parked itself right over the Texas Hill Country. It didn't move. It just sat there, pulling in moisture and building storm clouds that dumped rain over the same spot, again and again. This kind of event is extremely rare and hard to forecast in advance. By the time meteorologists saw what was happening, it was already too late. Radar showed training thunderstorms, meaning they were forming and dumping rain in a line over the same river forks again and again. And here's what made it worse. All this rain fell over rocky terrain. The soil in central Texas doesn't soak up water like flat areas do. It acts more like pavement. Water rolls off quickly and heads straight downhill. That's exactly what happened. 
Within minutes, streams and dry riverbeds turned into deadly currents. According to scientists, this was not just bad luck. It was a perfect meteorological trap, a combination of systems that hadn't happened in decades, all targeting the exact place that could handle it the least. Now, after analyzing the data, meteorologists say they've solved it, but the truth is almost more terrifying. It was unstoppable. When the river rose, there was no time to run. The Guadalupe River is no stranger to flooding, but what happened this time was beyond anything locals had ever seen. And the shed started banging against the, uh, the house. And my wife jumped up and she looked out the back and she said, there's a river back there. And it came with almost no warning. Around 1 a.m., campers near Hunt were asleep. The skies were quiet just hours earlier, but deep upstream, heavy rain had already begun to fall. The river that usually flows gently through the Texas hill country turned violent in minutes. According to experts, it wasn't just one part of the river. It was both forks, the north and the south, getting hit with rain at the same time. When they met, the force was unstoppable. Within just 45 minutes, the river level near Hunt surged over 25 feet. Families were sleeping in tents and RVs right along the water. Most didn't even know what was coming until it was too late. Camp cabins were swept away. Entire vehicles vanished in the current. Cell phone alerts either came too late or not at all. And when the water hit, it moved fast. Survivors described hearing a distant roar, then seeing trees, debris, and cabins flying by. For many, there was no time to grab anything. The only choice was to run or climb. Scientists later explained that the terrain around the Guadalupe made the flood so much worse. Unlike cities like Houston, which are flat, the hill country is made of slopes, cliffs, and dry creeks. These creeks were empty just days before, but once the rain hit, they became funnels, directing water toward the river with terrifying speed. Add in the rocky hard ground that doesn't absorb much water, and it's a recipe for disaster. Flash floods here don't rise slowly, they explode. Even the river gauges were no help. The main gauge at Hunt was taken out by the flood itself. That means there was no real-time data as the river rose, leaving forecasters blind during the most critical moments. Now that scientists have mapped the rainfall and flow, they believe this was one of the fastest flood surges in Texas history. It's not just the water, it's the terrain, the timing, and the fact that this happened in the middle of the night while hundreds were sleeping. It was a silent killer, and by the time most people opened their eyes, it was already too late. Warning signs were there. People are asking, if this was so dangerous, why wasn't there more warning? The truth is there was, but it wasn't enough. On Thursday afternoon, the National Weather Service issued a flood watch for the hill country, warning of possible flash flooding. But at the time, it was just a watch. Nothing was happening yet, and nothing looked immediately alarming. Then came the night, around 1 a.m. Friday, storms began dumping rain directly over the north and south forks of the Guadalupe River. At 2 a.m., a flash flood warning was issued, and by 4.03 a.m., it was upgraded to a flash flood emergency, the highest alert level. But here's the catch. Only 17 minutes later, the river had already reached major flood stage in Hunt. For many people, it was already too late. Cell phone alerts went off, but most were asleep. And even if someone did hear the warning, getting out of bed and escaping rising floodwaters in the dark, especially in a rural area, was almost impossible. Campers, families, and children were trapped before they even knew what was happening. Scientists now say this event tested the limits of modern forecasting. Radar showed something rare and fast building, but technology still can't pinpoint the exact spot a flash flood will hit, especially when it builds in less than an hour. The system worked as designed, but nature moved faster. In the end, it wasn't a failure of science, but a reminder that nature still holds the upper hand. Survivors faced a nightmare with no way out. When the river surged through the hill country, it didn't leave time for second chances. Entire camps were caught in the flood, including Camp Mystic, where children and counselors were staying for the holiday weekend. Some were pulled from the water in time. Others are still missing. For those who lived through it, the stories are hard to hear and harder to forget. But you couldn't see anything. It was pitch black. But hearing people scream, kids screaming, asking for help. Survivors described waking up to water rising around their beds. 
Some tried to run. Others climbed trees, clung to rooftops, or floated on pieces of debris. One mother said her daughter called at 4.15 a.m., crying, saying the cabin was flooding, and then the line went dead. A father said he grabbed his two sons and tried to run uphill, only to be knocked off his feet by a current so strong it swept a truck away like a toy. Emergency crews rescued more than 850 people in the first two days. But even they struggled. Roads were gone. Bridges had collapsed. Helicopters were called in. Boats flipped in the current. One firefighter said, I've worked hurricanes and tornadoes, but I've never seen water move like this. Volunteers rushed in with rope, kayaks, and bare hands. Strangers pulled strangers out of danger. Some didn't even wait for help. They became it. And that's the truth of this tragedy. In the middle of disaster, people didn't run. They reached out, they helped, and they fought to save each other, even when everything around them was falling apart. Scientists say it was a perfect storm, and we've seen it before. After studying satellite images, radar data, and rainfall totals, scientists now say this wasn't just bad luck. It was a worst case scenario. Two fading tropical systems, one from the Gulf and another from the Pacific, funneled moisture directly into central Texas. Then, a small but powerful system called a mesoscale convective vortex, an MCV, settled over the hill country. That spinning pocket of pressure drew in moisture like a magnet, building intense thunderstorms right above the Guadalupe River. It wasn't just one storm, it was training storms meaning they formed over the same spot again and again, dumping water faster than the ground could handle. The rocky soil of hill country doesn't absorb much. Instead, it sends water rushing downhill fast. Within an hour, creeks became rivers, rivers became torrents, and the land couldn't stop it. And the scariest part? This isn't the first time it's happened. In 1987, a similar flood hit the same region, killing residents. In 2015, the Blanco River in Wimberley surged overnight, killing families in their sleep. And yet, little has changed. No major upgrades to warning systems. No widespread changes to how camps or RV parks are built near water. Just memory and hope that it wouldn't happen again. This time, it did. And it was worse. Lives were lost, but questions are just beginning. As the water recedes, the grief remains. More than 70 lives have been confirmed lost, with several still missing. Many of the victims were children, some at summer camps, some just visiting for the weekend. Families are grieving, communities are mourning, and across the state, one question keeps coming up. Could this have been prevented? Some parents are asking why camps were built so close to rivers in the first place. Others want to know why flood emergency systems didn't go off sooner or louder. Lawsuits are already being discussed. Local officials say they followed protocol, but critics argue the warnings were too late and too quiet. At the federal level, President Trump declared a disaster zone, opening the door for funding and investigations. FEMA and the USGS are already on site, surveying damage and collecting data. But no funding can undo the loss. No research can bring back the children lost that night. Meanwhile, Online conversations have exploded. Videos of the flood went viral. So did emotional posts from survivors and families. People are angry, confused, and looking for answers. And now that scientists have explained how it happened, many want someone to be held accountable for why we weren't ready for it. Will this tragedy finally bring change? Now that scientists understand exactly how this flood unfolded, many are asking what's next. Texas has been here before. Floods, warnings, promises. But this time, the damage is too great to ignore. Emergency managers are calling for upgrades to warning systems. Meteorologists say they need more sensors in rural areas like Hunt. And local leaders want new rules for where camps and homes can be built. One of the key demands is better real-time alerts. The river gauge at Hunt was destroyed by the flood, cutting off critical data. Experts say we need stronger equipment faster mobile warnings, and public awareness campaigns, especially for visitors who don't understand how fast hill country can flood. There's also a growing push for new legislation. Some want mandatory evacuation zones during flash flood watches. Others want summer camps to be required to build on higher ground. 
Whatever the solution is, the voices pushing for it are louder now than ever before. Still, survivors are cautious. They have heard promises before. They've seen tragedies fade from the news and changes fade from memory. But this time feels different. The scale of loss is too large, the science is too clear, and the public is paying attention. Texas can't undo what happened, but it can decide what happens next.